Well, we finally made it through January, you guys, in what felt like a really long month, this one. But today we are going to be ranking the films that I saw in January, starting from the worst, going up to the best. <laughs> How's it going, Sal here, and welcome back to the channel. So today on the channel, no Funko Pops today, apart from the ones behind me, of course. But today I've got a new feature where I'm going to be ranking every film that I saw every single month. So today we are going to be ranking the films that I saw in the month of January. Anyway, let's get into the 10 films that I saw in the month of January. Coming in at number 10 is the most recent film I watched, and it was a film called Men. Men was available to watch on Amazon Prime, and I didn't really know what to think. I got recommended the film by my sister. She said, just watch the film. She didn't want to give me any spoilers. Uh, the only spoiler maybe was the name Men. Uh, Men is about a woman that goes to uh, the countryside for a break to get over the death of her husband. And as she goes to the countryside, not always as it seems, as things start to go, a little bit eerie. It comes in at number 10 as it's a film that the ending was, was really lacking for me. It didn't, um, it was more of a metaphorical film in my opinion. Uh, the film wasn't very literal and films that are very metaphorical and you have to interpret it in another way. Um, what they were trying to do, I understood what they were trying to do, but I just don't think they nailed it that well. Um, quite, a, quite a weird film and uh, yeah, it's, it's very limited what I can say about the film. Uh, without spoiling it but um yeah maybe go, if you want to watch a quite a weird film uh go and watch it but for me comes at number 10 the ending kind of ruined it for me and yeah that's all i can really say without spoiling the film coming in at number nine is a film that you may have seen already if you haven't seen this film it would you have of course seen the original and i am talking about disney's pinocchio it took me a long while to see this mainly because i wasn't that interested in seeing the film this is the pinocchio film on disney plus starring tom hanks uh, for me it was a like for like remake of the classic Disney film, which kind of gets a little bit boring. You know the story, you know exactly what's going to happen. Comes in at number nine. It was a film that I wanted to see once. Uh, will I see it again? Again, probably not. So Pinocchio comes in at number nine. Coming in at number eight was actually the first film I saw of 2023 and is Disney Pixar's Strange World. Now, Strange World. Again, quite a strange film. The concept was quite strange. I'm not sure what um, Pixar was trying to do with the film, as I'm not sure if it got a proper launch. I didn't know anything about this film um, prior to it being released. And uh, usually with Disney and Pixar films, you would, of course, get merch and Funko Pops. But there's been nothing of that, or nothing of the sort. I did Google if there's any um, Strange World Funko Pops coming. So I'm not sure if this was just a quick filler for Pixar to make a bit of money before other projects come out later on in the year. But yeah, Strange World, it was an okay film. Not sure if I'd be interested in seeing it again. It was an easy film to watch on New Year's Day. Was it a classic Pixar film? Definitely not. Was it an okay watch? Of course it is. Lately for me, these Pixar films haven't been hitting the nail on the head for me. So that is why Strange World comes in at number eight. Coming in at number seven is a COVID slasher movie. Now, Maybe a bit soon for COVID slasher movies. And this one goes by the name of Sick. Now, Sick did have an interesting concept, mainly because it was set in a pandemic. And now, of course, we will live through a pandemic. It's based on the story of two best friends. They decide to quarantine together, but they don't quarantine at each other's houses. They go to a cabin in the woods, pretty much. And of course, you know what's going to happen uh, in a cabin in the woods. Of course, when the two girls do quarantine, they aren't alone. And it turns into a COVID slasher movie. A decent watch. Um, a film that... Maybe I would see again. There were some real scary and iffy moments. And uh, what I did like about the film, it had a sense of realism. In some of the action sequences, there was blood. There was real life instances that you could actually see happening to yourself if you was in these situations. And overall, um, when it comes to the end of the film, you do understand why uh, these things happened. Maybe Sick is a film that I would recommend you watch at least once. Um, something a little bit different and something, of course, with in a different context, of course, with us uh, going through the pandemic. But yeah, coming in at number seven was Sick. Coming in at number six is The Menu, starring Nicholas Holt, Ralph Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy. The Menu is a comedy horror thriller where a young couple travel to to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises and indeed this film did have some shocking surprises it was a film that as soon as i started watching it i was hooked there were some jarring and irritating moments some bits that i didn't like but i was really curious the whole film 
and as things started to unfold it grabbed my attention more and more um as for the ending it didn't end the way i thought it was going to go i thought the film could have took a more orthodox turn the ending was quite surprising for me and there have been some theories into what really happened so if you're if you think you've got an idea of what happened in the menu maybe have a little google what you what actually did happen because uh there was, when i did a bit of research the theory i read makes so much more sense than what i interpreted the film and how it ended so uh yeah coming in at number six with the menu a film i really did enjoy it and it was a great watch and definitely is a film that i actually would watch again now we're into the top five and coming in at number five is a film that's been out for quite a while i believe now but i was quite late in seeing it and that is the film the black phone black phone had a very simple story a man grabs kids on the streets and kidnaps them that was basically the plot of the story uh overall there was so much going on and i was very very curious to see where this was going to go it hooked me from here it hooked me from here and i was there's was some really interesting things going on such as uh the young girl in it she could she had these visions and dreams and sometimes they come true but overall when i got to the end of the film some things things like that wasn't explained why like why could she have these visions and dreams and um yeah i don't want to give too much away of course but um there's so much of that film that just wasn't explained and have the reason and get give you any reason to why things were happening which was a real frustration i really didn't like uh, the way the film ended the ending did feel really rushed to me but uh, a great film nonetheless i just wish they nailed the ending a little bit better with horrors i do re i love a good horror but it, i do find it uh, quite difficult for me to get scared at times um, i wasn't really scared watching this but i was definitely hooked and i feel it's more important to be hooked than to be scared when watching films these days uh but yeah the black phone comes in at number five a good film a decent watch just a little bit disappointed in the ending coming in at number four is mega now i'm sure a lot of you know about the film mega now every time i'm putting on tv these days the trailer for megan does come on if it's not on tv i'm seeing the trailer on the youtube advert megan tells the story of a young girl katie who loses both her parents in a horrible car accident she's adopted by her aunt Gemma, a woman who isn't quite prepared to take on the responsibility of a child, let alone a traumatised child in KD. Megan, of course, is an AI robot that isn't quite ready yet to be released to the general public. And of course, as you can expect, things do tend to go wrong. How the problem I did have with the film that I didn't need to see the film to know what exactly was going to happen. I was watching the film and you're almost waiting for these things to happen. And you're just ticking it off. Yep, I expected this to happen. I expected this to happen. And that was literally what happened plot for plot for plot and i'm not sure if that's me being clever and just thinking the story is very predictable but um if you haven't seen the film megan and you've got an idea what you think might happen you probably bang on as well i actually did go with my mum as well to see the film and we had a great time watching the film uh the film length actually wasn't too bad either i feel like i think it's just a, just over an hour and a half perfect time for a horror slash thriller movie um sometimes the horror films do drag and you kind of lose interest but megan definitely had a perfect runtime good acting as well overall and uh yeah i think there are reports of a sequel in the works in 2025 but yeah megan comes in at number four coming in at number three was a film that i saw at the beginning of january as well and this is where the cruel dad sing where the cruel dad sing i thought this was actually going to be a horror slash thriller for some reason uh, from the trailers and all the snippets that i did see it was daisy edgar jones mainly running through the woods loads of escaping going on but it turns out it wasn't that at all but where the crowd i sing almost had more of a um like a the notebook kind of feel and uh there's a lot going on it's quite a long film it is not a film that you could just put on a text on your phone you do need to give the film your full attention i really did like the film uh, despite the film not being what i thought it was going to be uh, that's why hence why it does come in at number three it was a really good watch um there are some little twists and turns along the way uh but yeah a really good film this one I, this is where the crowd dad sing definitely a film i would recommend watching it like i said it's quite a long one so maybe if you watch it once you probably wouldn't go back to the film but daisy edgar jones was brilliant in it and it's definitely worth a watch that's why where the crowd dad sing comes in at number Number three coming in at number two is a film called barbarian now barbarian another film available to watch on disney plus although you could argue that it shouldn't be on disney plus for me the little you know about the film don't google it don't do any research do not watch, watch the trailers just put on the film barbarian just sit back relax enjoy the film and just see where it takes you the, li the less you know about the film the better experience you're going to have watching it um for me barbarian was so close to being my number one film uh, for the month of january but yeah barbarian a really great film to watch also has bill skarsgård and justin long in it um the basic synopsis is without giving uh, too much away is a young lady has booked an airbnb and she goes 
goes to the Airbnb and it's already been booked. Uh, Bill Skarsgård is already in there. So they've got to decide whether, what they're going to do regarding the Airbnb arrangement. And that's literally all I can tell you about the film without giving too much away. But Barbarian, really great film. Really close to being my favourite film of January. Uh, but yeah, that's but Barbarian comes in at number two. Coming in at number one, should be no surprise, it is Avatar The Way of Water. No explanation needed for Avatar The Way of Water is. It was a film that I saw uh, just over a week ago now at the cinema. I went to see the film in 3D and boy, it did not disappoint. It was a bit of a slow burn that first Avatar The Way of Water. It does take you on a, a bit of a journey again. And uh, but yeah, I loved it. I'm not the I'm not a massive Avatar fan, and I wasn't that excited to see the uh, the sequel either. Um, I recently watched the original again, and it was a film that I enjoyed, but it didn't really hook me. I wasn't um, it wasn't a franchise that I was that excited about. Like it doesn't come close to a Star Wars, a Harry Potter, a Lord of the Rings. It was just Avatar it was just a decent one-off film. But now that we have had the sequel, and the sequel was brilliant, and especially watching it in 3D, it really didn't disappoint. And uh, as soon as it finished, I felt like watching it again. It was a really, really long film. Don't get me wrong. But it just takes you into this world, especially with the 3D. The cinema photography was incredible, and the colours. Honestly, there's so much, so many good things about the film. I did, like, I did enjoy the storyline. Although I must say, I feel like the plot was very, very similar to the original Avatar. If you understand what I'm saying here. But yeah, Avatar: The Way of Water does come in comfortably at number one for the January films that I watched this month. Uh, do let me know if you've seen any of these films in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Thank you for watching today's video, guys. And I'll see you back here soon for a brand new one. See you later.